So let's begin. The Red Tiger F7 in touch is finally here and this is the box pack. So on top you have the picture of the dash cam and here is the Red Tiger logo. You have this 4K ultra clear app control and GPS tracking some features highlighted here. Let's take a look at the bottom of the box. They say it is 4K plus 1080p dual channel dash cam, built in Wi-Fi and GPS app control, HDR, WDR, super night vision, G sensor, loop recording and parking monitoring. So let's quickly open up the box and take a look inside. Hmm, a pretty interesting looking dash cam. So I haven't seen any dash camera. I mean, the protrusion of the lens is so prominent. And on top of the dash cam, it says 4K Ultra HD, Wi-Fi and GPS. On the other side of the dash cam, you have this power button and micro SD card slot. At the back, you have a screen and they have given some instructions as well. And these instructions read as, please read the manual before using, please do a bench test before installation. It is recommended to use a branded U3 SD card to record 4K videos. The micro SD card should be formatted in the dash cam before using so very helpful instructions for first time users you have this up and down button on the other side and this is probably a mode button on the bottom you have ventilation holes on the front this is probably a speaker grill and on top you have this rear camera port and a type c port for the main power along with ventilation holes on all the other sides so let's just take a look at the mount and see how this adapts onto the dash cam so here you go, this is a suction mount along with the GPS module. So as you can see, it says GPS right here. So the suction mount mechanism is different from what I've seen till date. There is no specific switch which you can flip. There is actually a switch which you have to rotate in order to make the suction mount adapt onto the windshield. Here is the main mounting adapter with four pins right here. You see the corresponding four strips on the dash camera. So let's just slide in the holder and see how it fits in. There is also a nut here which you can loosen on tighten and based on this you can adapt the dash camera onto the windshield. So it's a rotating mount and it rotates uh, should I say about more than 90 degrees and this even should adapt to vertical windshields but I'm not pretty sure I think this lens protrusion might interfere with vertical windshields. So let's consider this booklet as a vertical windshield and if I do place it here well, I think the lens is going to touch the windshield and there won't be any gap between the lens and the windshield in case if you have a car with a vertical windshield. So at first you have this user manual for the Red Tiger dash cam and this is very useful for first time users. You get all the details regarding the dash camera's usage, its installation, its technical specifications. Well, everything is available right here. If you're interested, you can take a look at that. Following this, you also have two electrostatic stickers, one for the front and one for the rear, I suppose. Nothing else here. So there are certain additional clips also provided. You have this bright orange colored wiring toolbar. Well, I haven't seen any orange colored wiring toolbar until now. This is the first one. All of the ones which I have unboxed till now have been always black. So here is the rear camera of the Red Tiger F7N. A standard rear camera with a 360 degree rotation capability. You have this mount here and the lens. There is also a LED light at the other end. Then along with that you get a pre-attached front camera power cable with a single USB port right here. So you need to plug in this 12 volt car adapter into the 12 volt socket of the car and you get a spare USB port right here to power up any other appliances or devices which you might be using in your car. So as you can see, this is a type C port power cable, which plugs in into the front dash cam. So you have the uh, two electrostatic stickers. You have additional clips. You have this user manual, a wiring crowbar, the dash camera with the suction mount, a rear camera with its own specific power cable and a power cable for the front camera with a pre-attached 12 volt car charger with a dedicated USB port. So let's take a look at how this camera performs in real world conditions. So starting with the footage from daytime with the Red Tiger dash cam, let's move on and take a look at the license plate read. So as you can see, there are four vehicles which I have pointed out, the Renault Duster on the far left, the Activa on the right, and two vehicles in the middle of the screen. So taking a look at the far left on the Renault Duster, so you do see some sort of a pixelation, a dotted noise due to interpolation, but more or less you can make out the number plate even at the 
far end of the lens during daytime. Although it is slightly blurred due to magnification, the overall readability is pretty decent at this distance. Now moving on and taking a look at the two wheeler right in the center. So because the license plate is pretty small and the numbers on the license plates are even smaller, the camera is not able to get a good read of the license plates even though the distance is pretty short. So this goes to show that the license plate readability also depends on the size of the letters and the numbers being displayed on the license plate. Taking a look at the Toyota Etios in the middle of the screen at an even far range than the two-wheeler. Now you can make out the number plate in this although not pretty clear. Slight pixelation, slight noise again due to interpolation but the overall readability again is pretty decent and even though this is farther than the motorbike due to the largest size of the letters and numbers you can more or less make out this number plate. Moving on further taking a look at the Honda Activa at the right edge of the lens you don't see as much pixelation as the other three samples which we just saw due to the near proximity of this vehicle. The overall read of the plate is good. You can make out each letter and number pretty clearly at this short range from this two wheeler. So this was the license plate readability for the front camera. Now taking a look at the rear camera, let's zoom in. So you don't see any pixelation within this image since this is native 1080p, but you do find some blurriness due to the magnification factor. But at a very close range, as you're seeing on the screen right now, the number plate is readable and at daytime, more or less all 1080p cameras perform very well at a very close range. Taking a look at the side by side comparison of both front and the rear camera, on top you find the front camera with a 2160p 4K resolution at 24 frames per second. It has about 24,000 kbps bitrate and the file size is about 180 MB per minute. At the bottom you find the rear camera with a 1080p full HD resolution, 24 fps same as the front, around 7000 kbps bitrate and 55 MB file size per minute. Now what's impressive is the rear camera quality is actually much better than I expected. It's not as bad as most of the rear cameras which you have seen till date. Although the quality of the rear camera is not as high as the front camera, it does hold on its own and it's a pretty decent quality. The front camera video quality also looks pretty decently balanced. The video footage tends to be slightly on the softer side in the rear camera compared to the front dash cam. So let's head into the settings of the dash camera and take a look at all the settings it has to offer. So do note that when you enter the settings, the dash camera will stop recording. So at top, you have the sound recording option, which you can enable or disable. Basically, it's the mic of the dash cam. Then following that, the important option is the video resolution. You have 2160 plus 1080p or 1440p plus 1080p. So currently selected at 2160 plus 1080p, which is 4K plus full HD. Following that you have the loop recording duration which you can select to 1 minute, 3 minute and up to 5 minutes. Then you can enable or disable the timestamp on the video. Then you have the collision sensing option which works based on the G sensor. You have the way to alter the speed units either to kilometers per hour or miles per hour. Then you have the time lapse recording option which you can enable or disable. But do note that the parking mode requires a dedicated hardware kit which you need to purchase separately. So in case of time lapse recording, you can select a G trigger, which is G sensor trigger recording, or you can select a minimum of about 12 hours, up to 24 hours and a maximum of about 48 hours. Following that, you have a Wi-Fi name, SSID, which you can change. You can change the Wi-Fi password, then you have the firmware version, then you have the option to format the SD card. And lastly, you have the option to reset the dash camera. So here you go. This is the dash camera screen and it's a pretty wide screen, I must say. And the most important aspect, this is a touchscreen panel. So let's take a look at what this touchscreen has to offer in terms of usability for the end user. So on the right, you have this up and down buttons along with the mode button at the middle. You also have the mode button similarly placed on the touchscreen as well. So let's click on the screen and take a look at the various different options within the settings of this dash cam. So here you go, this is the main setting section, you get a date and time being displayed on the left. You have this video option, playback and setting option. So let's first jump in into the settings. So first of all, you have this resolution option wherein you can select 2160 at 30 FPS, 1440p at 60 FPS and 1080p at 120 FPS. Well, interestingly, 2160p at 30 FPS is only offered when it is in a front camera mode only, I think. And if you connect the rear camera, it will come down to 24 FPS. 
So let's set back. So here is the audio button, which is basically the mic. You can turn it off or on based on your requirement. Then you have the date stamp option. Then you have the loop recording option, which you can extend from one to three to five minutes. Then you have the G sensor option. So these options are all kind of similar to what you saw within the app settings. Following this, you have the fatigue driving option. So you get a warning after a predetermined set of time. You can set it up to one hour, two hours or three hours or you can turn it off completely. Then you have the speed stamp, which you can turn off or on. Then you have the GPS stamp. Following that, you have the speed unit, the GPS info. Now this shows the strength of the GPS signal. Now currently, since I'm indoors, the GPS signal is not so much. So let's head back. Then you have the rear camera flip option. Then you have the option to mirror the flip. Then you have the download app option where you need to display a QR code, which you can scan to download the app. Then you have the Wi-Fi hotspot option, which you can enable or disable. Then you have the language option. Then you have the time format option. Then you have the date and time option where you can, you can select current date and time. Then you have the time zone option. Coming back, you have the clicking tone option, which you can enable or disable. So I'll just currently set it at enable. Then you have the screen saver option. You can set it off so that the screen is always displaying the recording. You can set it to 10 seconds, 30 seconds and two minutes maximum. Then you have the parking monitoring option, which you can turn off completely. You can set the G sensor trigger record, time lapse 12 hours record and time lapse 24 hours record. I think you also have a 48 hours mode as well. So here you go. This is the time lapse 48 hours mode. Then you have the format reminder, which you can set each at 15 days or 25 days, or you can set it off completely. Then you have the format SD card option. Then you have the card speed option, which is going to test the speed of the card, which you have inserted within the dash cam. As you can see, it says the card speed is proper. So let's head on to the default settings. So this is a basically a factory reset. Then you have the version number. Then you have the help center, which again displays a QR code which will take you to the website of the Red Tiger dash cam. So this is an impressive little touch screen. And if you want to take a deeper look into it, you have the user manual of this camera, wherein it provides all the details, all the specific details about each aspect of this screen. You can take a look at that if you're into it. So taking a look at the first sample during nighttime from the front camera, I have paused the video at a certain point, And if zoomed in, you can clearly make out the number plate all letters and numbers are clearly visible but do note that the glare of my headlights are not particularly falling directly on the license plate and that contributes to one major reason of why this license plate is clearly visible so let's move on further down into the video at a point and then pause it again so now as you can see my headlights are hitting directly the license plates and the entire glare of my headlights is completely white washing the license plate and removing any ability to read this now this is a common problem among all the older generation star with sensors and if you want a readability in this condition you will need to have a camera with a star with 2 sensor taking a look at the rear camera now here's an example the maruti swift right behind me has no headlights and if i zoom in on its license plate you can also make out a hint of red glow from the rear tail lights of my car within this sample and the license plate read in spite of the license plate being very small is still good you can make out each letter and number pretty clearly showing you a contrasting sample so in this case the rear vehicle has its headlights focused directly on my dash cam and this is completely white washing the license plate removing any ability to read this in this condition so do note that the ability to read license plate varies a lot based on the way the light is falling on the dash cam based on the way of the size of the license plate and many other factors so in this particular example if you feel the license plate is completely whitewashed let's move on and show you another example wherein the lights from the car are not hitting directly on my dash cam and if i just zoom in on the plate a very much better looking read compared to the previous one you can more or less make out the entire number plate so do note that in this condition there is a mild glare from the headlight although not as direct as the previous example where i showed you and also along with that there is a bit of street light falling on those license plates which enhance the ability of the dash camera to get a proper capture coming to the daytime sample from the front dash camera let's pause the video and show you the example of three different cars at three variable distances 
So the first car on the left is the i20 and if I zoom in on the license plate it is pretty much close to my car and this gives a good read of a license plate. You do see a slight noise due to interpolation of the video but the overall number plate readability is pretty decent. Now let's zoom out and take a look at the middle vehicle. Now in this example you do see a slight increase in terms of noise. The overall readability of the plate is also decent and you do see a slight blurriness at the lower border in this particular example. Now if we take a look at the farthest vehicle that is the Toyota Etios. Now this is about a distance of 25 feet and if I zoom in you can clearly make out the number plate in this example. You do see some blurriness due to magnification and a moderate amount of noise. The overall number plate in spite of being blurred is still readable at such a far range of about 25 feet. Now this indicates that the position of the license plate in relation to the camera, the lighting conditions, all these factors have a great influence in terms of how well you read the license plate. Coming to the rear dash camera during daytime, let's pause the video and take a look at the two wheeler right behind the rear camera. There is a sort of a blurriness in this. The size of the license plate is also very small since this is a two wheeler, but the overall readability is good and you can't be expecting much from a 1080p camera than this. Taking a look at the other vehicle which is about a distance of 15 to 20 feet, again a blurriness due to the magnification but very less amount of noise since this is a native 1080p, blurred out letters and numbers but the overall read is still good and you can individually make out the number plate. Let's fast forward and show you another example from the rear camera to show you how the lighting condition and distance affects the license plate read. Now zooming in so as you can see this is a much better license plate read compared to the previous one which I just showed you now. In this example the whole of the license plate is pretty good, very minimal amount of noise, slight blurriness and this is the best any 1080p rear camera can do which specifically doesn't have the latest Star Wars 2 sensor. Now comparing the video footage from both the front and the rear camera side by side, on top you see the front camera, on the bottom you have the rear camera. The front camera has a resolution of 2160p, well basically it's an upscale 2160p, it has a frame rate of 24fps, about 24,000 kbps bitrate and 180mb of file size per minute. The rear camera has a full HD resolution of 1080, 24fps frames and 7400 kbps bitrate along with 55mb per minute of file size. The front camera has a slightly warmer tone compared to the rear camera and also a better contrast levels compared to the rear one but the overall readability from the rear camera is actually good and much better than what I initially expected out from it. Both the video footages are pretty decent and usable for a day to day basis. So you can make out that the rear camera is having a bit of a difficulty adjusting to the glare of the vehicle's headlights and that is not the case with the front camera which can somewhat adapt to the glare from the vehicles and you will get a more better footage from the front camera compared to the rear one. You also do tend to see a slight haziness in the rear camera when compared to the front one. Now this is one of the most common thing you can see in any budget dual dash cam setup. The front camera will be better and will offer much improved quality when compared to the rear camera provided within the dash cam units. So here's a comparison of a snapshot from both the Easy Drive and Red Tiger dash cams. On top you find the Easy Drive, on the bottom is the Red Tiger dash cam. So as you can see by the pointed arrow, this is the extra part which you can see in the Red Tiger dash cam because it seems to offer a slightly wider field of view compared to the Easy Drive dash cam. If you can notice on the left portion, both the videos are cropped at the same point but at the right corner of the video, the Red Tiger looks to have a slightly wider field of view when compared to the Easy Drive. Now let's move on further down into the video and quickly fast forward to a point where my car reaches about a distance of 10 to 15 feet from the forward car. Now let's zoom in on the license plate. So this is the license plate read from the Easy Drive. The letters and numbers are more or less visible, slightly blurred out but the overall plate is quite readable. In terms of the Red Tiger, a very similar experience, slightly blurred out letters and numbers but the overall plate readability is decent. Comparing them side by side, on top you find the Easy Drive, on the bottom you find the Red Tiger. Now there is a very minimal to little difference between these two samples, I mean in terms of the license plate readability, they provide absolutely the same experience I think, but the overall footage tone I think is more cooler in the Easy Drive and the Red Tiger footage gives off a more warmer tone. 
let's move a bit further down so that we get to a very close range and if i now zoom in the easy drive sample gives a very clear and a bright white look for the license plate read all letters are numbers are excellent in their readability if we take a look at the sample from the red tiger dash cam again a very clear appearance of the license plate although i must point out that the red tiger gives off more shadows and the highlights and the brightness compared to the easy drive is relatively lesser if we stack them together side by side on top you find the easy drive on the bottom the red tiger now you can make out that the easy drive is looking more whitish and more brighter compared to the red tiger and the red tiger sample especially by itself is looking i think more natural compared to the easy drive sample but the overall readability of the license plate is more or less actually the same there is no difference in terms of the clarity of the license plate coming to the night time sample from both these dash cameras so as you can see there is an eco sport right in front and if you take a look at the license plate at the bottom it is completely whitewashed due to my headlight glare now this is a common problem with all the previous gen star with sensors and if i just turn off my headlights so as you can see now the license plate become readable after i turn off my headlights and if you can take a look at the sample from the easy drive you do see a moderate to significant amount of noise in this sample because this is at the end of the day an upscaled 4k and not a native one the overall readability of the plate is decent all letters and numbers are clearly visible do remember that this is after i turned off my headlights taking a look at the sample from the red tiger dash cam again a very similar experience although i must say the footage in this is looking more warmer compared to the easy drive also a moderate amount of noise in this as this too is an upscaled 4k and not a native one the letters and numbers are clearly visible and both cameras offer a similar experience in terms of the license plate readability comparing them side by side now as you can clearly make out the red tiger sample looks more yellowish orange and the easy drive looks more light yellowish to whiter compared to the red tiger sample now moving down further into the footage so that the vehicle moves a bit farther from my car about a distance of 15 to 20 feet and now if we take a look at the license plate from the easy drive again a good read of the license plate all letters and numbers are visible but again do note this is after i have turned off my headlights and not when the headlights are turned on if we take a look at the red tiger sample now a very similar experience again as with the easy drive letters and numbers are clearly visible both samples carry a moderate amount of noise but the overall readability at a distance of 15 to 20 feet is pretty decent given that your headlights are turned off and not hitting the license plate directly comparing them side by side you can clearly make out that these are almost similar samples in terms of readability the only difference you might point out is in the color tone now as you can see as soon as i turn on my headlights the entire readability just goes away and you won't be able to read anything in such conditions taking a look at the rear camera sample so as you can see on top is the easy drive rear camera on the bottom is the red tiger f7 n but in the easy drive you do find a slightly higher field of view compared to the red tiger's rear camera i have pointed out that portion with a white square and a red arrow this is the extra part which you get in the easy drive rear camera sample when compared to the rear camera of the red tiger again now i wanted to point out at a certain thing now take a look at where the arrows are showing the hay stack the man is carrying on the scooter and also the weed bush at the back i think in terms of the clarity the red tiger does seem to look a bit more natural when compared to the easy drive sample at these two particular points i mean in even in the overall footage the red tiger does tend to give a more natural feel to the footage compared to the easy drive dash cam taking a look at the license plate readability now let's zoom in on the easy drive sample a good read of the license plate i must say not very clear slightly blurred out a bit painted appearance but still letters and numbers are more or less visible if we take a look at the red tiger sample now this is much better compared to the easy drive's rear camera and this looks as i said previously a bit more natural compared to the easy drive's rear camera sample if we put these together side by side you can make out that in terms of the readability the letters and numbers are visible are clear in both the samples but the overall tone of the video and the overall natural or a bit more processed look of the video you do find that the red tiger gives off a slightly natural look compared to the easy drives in this rear camera sample from both these dash cameras coming to the nighttime quality of the rear camera 
let's zoom in on the license plate at the very close range of about five feet there is a honda elevate right behind me and as you can see this is a readability from the easy drives rear camera it is also capturing some red hint that is due to my car's rear red lights in terms of the readability again a very good read all letters and numbers are excellently visible taking a look at the red tiger sample now this tends to look a bit more yellowish a hint of red because of my car's rear light and the readability of the license plate is again pretty decent and pretty good if we take a look at them side by side on top is the easy drive and on the bottom is the red tiger you do tend to note that again the red tiger gives off a slight natural vibe compared to a more contrasty a more painted appearance on the easy drives rear camera sample moving on further so that we take a look at the rear camera license plate readability sample from a far off distance about distance of more than 10 to 15 feet now this is where the rear cameras from both easy drive and red tiger fail to capture the license plate and this is pretty much common in most of the rear cameras which you have seen till date the high glare from the headlights of the cars facing towards the rear camera tend to whitewash the license plate readability and the only way to get a license plate readability from the rear camera is that if the vehicle is very very close about a distance of five feet or less to the rear dash cam moving on to the overall footage comparison on top is the easy drive and on the bottom is the red tiger i have even given out the technical specifications of each of these videos for your reference even in this as you can make out the color of the sky in the red tiger looks more bluish when compared to the easy drive whereas the easy drive tends to exhibit a slightly higher brightness and exposure levels compared to the red tiger dash cam the red tiger gives off a bit of a warmer tone and the easy drive gives up a more cool tone to the video not in any way saying that one footage is better than the other but there is a difference in the tone of the video taking a look at the night situation again a very similar experience overall you cannot make out a major difference between these two videos with your naked eye i mean if you zoom in you might find some differences but the overall footage does seem to be very similar as i said previously only varies in terms of their tones one is warmer and one is cooler and the overall ability to give off a good footage is pretty much similar in both the dash cameras even during night time as you're seeing right now coming to the rear camera quality comparison now even in this as i said previously the overall footage does seem to offer a similar and a very exact experience except for the fact that the red tiger maybe looks a slight natural and a slight more warmer and the easy drive gives of a very minute painted appearance not that the fact that it reduces the quality but there is a moderate amount of difference in terms of the video tone and in terms of the appearance or the look of the video in the rear camera during daytime coming to the night footage comparison as i said previously at night the headlight glare from the vehicles facing towards the rear dash cam completely whitewashed the footage in both the dash cameras and the rear camera usability becomes very less in such conditions but as you're seeing right now if there is no glare from rear cars if there are no rear cars present behind your car you do tend to get a decent footage which also provides a very similar experience so what do you think now which camera do you think will be the one which you're going to buy do tell me that in the comments and also if you have any doubts or queries regarding any of these products do write that down in the comments as well also if you're interested in purchasing any of these cameras the red tiger or the easy drive you'll find the links to purchase them also in the description below go ahead click down on the links check out the prices and purchase the one which you like the most so i hope this video has helped you out in clearing your doubts and in case if it did make sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now and smash that like button also don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you get notified each time i upload a new video thanks for watching and see you in the next one Thank you.